Wait, what? Wait, how's how a ten year old girl wrote Japan's most insane? A ten year old girl wrote a house. <laughs> ain't no way. Well, I wouldn't say ain't no way, but really. Oh, this is a good. This is such a good. Um, I feel like this is such a good friend movie. Or like, just like if you have somebody around that you want to show them something. I think there's a couple movies that come in mind. Like if you want to show them something really cool, out of out of the ordinary, twisty, with some action, you probably show them something like Old Boy. But if you want to show them something goofy, spoofy. And somehow a little bit spooky, you show them house, yo. This shit, this thing is so ridiculous, but I love it. Dreams are also, a curious thing. Also, if you're trying to chill out with friends and just have a good laugh, I feel like another movie that fits the agenda is Dazed and Confused. Thing. Just gotta shout that out, man. That shit goes hard. That shit goes hard. Dreams are a curious thing, aren't they? How the fairy tale can so easily be contorted into terror. How they can seemingly switch genres from one moment to the next. Allow me to welcome you to Nobuhiko Obayashi's masterpiece of madness. House. House. Beautiful. Beautiful. The story of seven young girls who head out to the countryside for an idyllic summer getaway only to be swallowed into phantasmagoric shadows, where one by one they're made meals of by everything from ravenous nukikubi, <laughs> haunted musical instruments, and a motley <laughs> gallery of other murderously wicked so household furnishings. Beds and clocks and flying wooden blocks, a completely crazed <laughs> the karate girl. <laughs> candy-colored carnage. Now, that all probably sounds like some manic fever dream spilled from the depths of a juvenile mind, but True. I promise you, there is a method to all this madness. House is a strange film, <laughs> with strange intentions, and all its component parts, from its rough-edged, amateurish effects and <gasps> schizophrenic editing... Bro, he got sniped by the lizard! The lizard got sniped! I don't even remember that! Component parts no! from its rough edged amateurish effects oh, and schizophrenic man. editing to its bizarre, <laughs> let's say, inconsistent character logic. <laughs> we're all designed specifically to make the film feel as if a child were recounting to you the events of some horrific nightmare they had just woken up from. Oh, uh, bro, she's my favorite. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that might be a stretch, but I love when she comes on it, especially this part. This shit comes out of nowhere. Uh, this was the first movie I watched on my OLED. In this moment where she's outside, uh, straight with the, the like, sunset view or whatever, I was like, damn, that looks so gorgeous. And then out of nowhere, she did that shit. Amateurish effects <laughs> she did this shit out of it. nowhere. It's bizarre and, let's say, inconsistent character logic. She's so goofy. We're all designed specifically to make the film feel as if a child were recounting to you the events of some horrific <laughs> nightmare they had just woken up from. Which right. begins to make a lot more sense once you consider the identity of this film's co-writer. Co-writer? This is Chigumi Obayashi, Nobuhiko Obayashi's daughter, who was just 10 years old at the time her father consulted her for this script. 10. Mm -hmm. なぜかというと、大人は自分がわかることしか考えないから人間のレベルだからつまらない。子供はね、true。わからないことと向き合うのね。不思議なことが面白い。映画の力はわかったことであってない。不思議なことが面白い。うん。Children <笑> for obvious reasons don't usually influence the horror genre in this direct a fashion. It's oh, usually fuck. filmmakers indirectly recalling. Uh, uh, I don't know. I've always seen it so opposite of like how other people see, like anything creatively. It's not that if like the younger you are, the better you are with. Well, honestly, kind of. <laughs> like, bro, kids like just or just like um, 
Yeah, man, with the right mind, you chillin' creatively. Because, bro, the older you get, the more you see in life, motherfuckers are gonna be like, like, get real. But, like, they don't even know what's real. It's like, uh, shit. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, man, it's just a mess. Like, so you're gonna question whether what you're doing is right or wrong. And kids don't give a fuck. Like, kids are like, this might be real and this might not be real. Either way, you're gonna enjoy this. Where, on the other hand, people, we grow up are fucking, bro, it's like, either you're mad that it's not real, or you're mad that it is real. <laughs> it's like, it's just like, some sort of understanding makes it worse. It's like, uh, yeah, that juvenile is fucking huge for it. It's like, horrors from their own childhoods. Things we all think scared us when we were young. But those experiences get hazy as we get older. True. We often forget the absurdity of our fears when <laughs> we were children. As adults, we want to rationalize everything. Take our fear, diagnose it, sort it, label it, put it in a neatly wrapped phobia with a list of common symptoms. But Obayashi wanted to capture the uncompromised imagination of that horror while it was still pure and immediate in the mind of a child, before being corrupted by the plague of adulthood. Like the fear of that hungry piano lid snapping at your fingers during lessons or the creepiness of dusty antiques and the idea of being trapped inside that loud old grandfather clock at the end of the mm. hall. Nightmare. Or getting so tired no, no, no. you feel as if you're being swallowed no, up no, in no. your own bed. <laughs> but his daughter's nightmares weren't the only childhood fears he drew inspiration from. You see, mm. Obayashi was born January 1938 in Hiroshima Prefecture. A normal life in a normal city. He was raised by his grandmother. He liked to draw and make up stories. And at seven years old, in the August of 1945... Nolan. A 15-kiloton atomic bomb was dropped on the edge of his hometown. Friends. Family. Childhood. Now, Jesus. just a little boy. And nothing left. Man, looking back on what, uh, looking back on Oppenheimer, now that it's out on DVD, I was thinking about, man, Spike Lee was kind of right. Not, I think Oppenheimer in itself, like the product is really fucking good. Like, like a 9.7. Something like that. I don't think there's really much you could change. I think it's more of like things you could like cut out for pacing. But honestly, I love the pacing. The pacing's brutal. But there's like maybe a second or a couple, whatever, that you could. But I think Spike Lee was kind of right that there needs to be a, some sort of cinema with the story being told right now. Just the after effect of this. Like, in a sense, we did get the after effect, because the ending of Oppenheimer is fucking massive. But, I think there's something more interesting about the actual, personable, not personable, but like, where the site was. Like, it'd be more interesting to be around, like, that thousand, a hundred thousand, whatever fucking meter radius, mile radius. Like, it'd be interesting to see... Almost like how in Chernobyl, the documentary series, like when it explodes, you see every single layer. Is like every single layer from people in the inside to the outside to the kind of outside to the maybe outside. And it's like there's a. It's very interesting to see that, but I don't know how well that would have worked with Oppenheimer, like Nolan's movie, because it is a good idea. I just don't know how you would have fit it in there. This is interesting. Very interesting piece of, uh, piece of storytelling that needs to be fleshed out in some form. Whether it be, like, docu-series or movie. It's gotta happen. Cause this shit is so disaster. That, that shit is just, like, it's on the level of, bro, it's like Chernobyl times a hundred. Or some shit like that. I'm no fucking math or science Polynesian matician, but fucking, uh, yeah, man, I'm just, I, I have to, I, I feel like it'd be cool. Well, <laughs> cool is not, I don't know, uh, in a sense it would be kind of cool, but it's more just like, hmm, I don't know the word. It's just be very significant. 
It'd be very significant. Obayashi said that that day birthed an artist's heart, and he chose to use cinema as his language to convey that feeling to those left around him. That sense of absolute loss that he felt in that moment. How your life can seemingly switch genres from one moment to the next. <laughs> True. Just like those girls entering the house, he was no longer afforded the luxury of living in the technicolor dreamscape of a children's fairy tale. In a violent flash of light, his life too had become a horror story. Horror can so easily feel like a product, something manufactured for midnight scares, something disposable. And that's not True. what this is. <laughs> this is a True. work poured directly from the heart of a man and the mind of his daughter. Two people who, through each other, found a way to work through their fear and turn it into something loud and colorful and absurd. A sort of familial therapy session through cinema. And I love that. I've always loved horror as an avenue for catharsis. A way of dealing with trauma in a controlled environment. Both for artists and True. for audience. You get a chance to True. apprehend that fear. Sort of form an alliance with it. When it's on celluloid, you're able to put a frame around it. You can get close to it and examine it. Make some sense of it for yourself. Even if it looks like nonsense at arm's length. But that's the beauty of it. It's pure lunacy and chaos. You got a man turning into a fucking pile of bananas, and at the same time, it's self-portraiture. It's deeply intimate and soulful, and so much what more than just the style piece it's reputed as. A truly <laughs> The fucking portraiture. legs just go flying. Every time I see that shit, it reminds me of memories of murder with uh, fucking that guy. The detective's just like shouting at him, and he's just out of nowhere fly but kicks. That's the beauty of it. That shit is so out of pocket. Get close to it and examine it. Make some sense of it for yourself, even if it looks like nonsense at arm's length. <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. It's pure lunacy and chaos. You gotta True. turn it into a fucking pile of bananas, and at the same time, it's self-portraiture. It's deep. Honestly, that's why. Uh, that's why I kind of say hor uh, horror movies are my favorite movies. They're so genre bending. Like out of every genre, that's the most genre to not give a fuck. Cause the idea of horror is to explore some shit that you're scared of and sometimes motherfucker let's be honest we scared of ourselves like we scared of what we think we scared of like what we doing or what like you know so like when someone comes out with a scary movie like get out or this like get out and specifically comes to mind pretty hard because that movie is like you could turn it into a spoofy pretty easily like it is spooky but it's not like it's not like the nun or like you know like it's not just some fucking demonic shit it is quite demonic but it's like an underlying tone of demonic is it it feeds the reality of that in reality there's more than just this spooky fucking doll that's over here popping fucking toasters too early it is also like within what is scary there's some like shit that's not scary but it's like a front for the scary it's like a, it's like a wall so when you break that wall it's uncomfortable and exciting it's like oh shit Plea and it's like whoa we cook it and soulful and so much in other movies like action movies and whatnot this is like a lot of areas like some people are scared to bust out of but then you got people like qt and uh robert uh, Ro uh, uh what's his name edgar wright Robert Edgar's, I don't think he's an action movie guy. Quentin Tarantino. Bro, this is just like, motherfuckers obviously like are mixing it, but when like an age of streaming, if you go on like Tubi, Netflix, they're just making movies that are tailored for that fucking like genre. It's so, it's, 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 there's like, it's like nothing. Uh, it's sometimes weird more than just but when shit like this happens it's so exciting the style piece it's reputed as and a horror is like one of a kind ex and that's why horror sits on top of me most of the time like, just the style they piece go hard. it's reputed as people ain't scared a truly that's one wild of a kind experience and a personal favorite of <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of wild saying out loud people are not scared to make scary shit different as much as people are scared to make like other shit different this is kind of weird piece it's reputed as a truly one-of-a-kind experience, and a personal favorite of mine. 
I've yet to see anything else like it in my life. So, do me a favor. Watch this movie if you haven't. Watch it again if you have. And let's all True. take that lesson from the Obayashi family. That we can reclaim our fears, traumas, and anxieties and turn all those horrible nightmares into something loud and colorful and beautifully insane. Sure. Very cool. It's a good as movie. That now, before I let you go, I over to National. Uh, oh man! Whoa! Oh no! The video crashed. Oh no! Something about Nebula. I bought ten, but anyways, that was interesting. A solid movie. I could watch that movie back. I I could watch that movie back today. I watched that movie maybe like a month ago. It was November? Yeah, I watched it like almost a month ago, around spooky time. That shit goes hard. I think it's a good movie. Really solid. Good fun. Very different. Very, very nice.